Hello and welcome to the news from Bahrain International. I am Hamad Youssef. His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Minister of Health Faiqa Saleh, where she thanked His Majesty for his support for the health sector and frontline workers. Al Saleh affirmed that what the kingdom has achieved in reaching advanced positions globally through its distinguished experience in addressing the pandemic would not have been possible without the support and patronage of His Majesty the King. The Minister congratulated His Majesty the King on the positive results of the official's visit of the WHO Director General Dr. Tedros Adhanom Gabriel within the framework of reviewing Bahrain's distinguished experience and efforts in combating the pandemic, which coincided with the opening of the WHO office in the kingdom. She also expressed thanks and appreciation to His Majesty for supporting the Ministry of Health and the National Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus with the support and leadership of His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, where Bahrain, with international testimonies, has made many achievements in terms of implementing plans and strategies, the level of readiness and efficiency, and harnessing all capabilities and resources to protect the health and safety of citizens and residents. Al Saleh wished His Majesty the King health and happiness, as well as success in the kingdom's development march for the benefit of its people. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received Sudan's Minister of Foreign Affairs Dr. Maryam Sadiq Al Mahdi at Rafah Palace. The minister is currently visiting the kingdom to mark the opening of the Sudanese embassy in Bahrain. His Royal Highness highlighted the depth of historic Bahrain Sudan relations, which continue to receive the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The minister conveyed the greetings of Sudan's President of the Transitional Sovereignty Council, Lieutenant General Abdel Fattah Al Burhan, and the Transitional Prime Minister, Dr. Abdel Abdullah Hamdok and extended their good wishes of continued progress and prosperity for Bahrain and its people. In return, His Royal Highness extended his greetings and wishes to the Sudanese President and Prime Minister of the Transitional Sovereignty Council and wished the people of Sudan greater prosperity. He noted the importance of further strengthening cooperation and coordination to build on shared Arab values, common purpose and regional cohesion. In this regard, His Royal Highness noted the progress witnessed by the joint agreement signed between Bahrain and Sudan which has contributed to providing promising investment opportunities and further development for both countries. His Royal Highness welcomed the minister's visit to Bahrain, affirming the kingdom's support to Sudan's efforts to enhance regional security and stability. Regional and international issues of common interest were discussed, as well as united efforts to overcome challenges presented by the global COVID-19 pandemic. For her part, the minister extended her gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and extended appreciation for His Royal Highness's continued support to furthering Bahrain-Sudan ties. The chairman of the Rajat Equestrian and Horse Racing Club High Committee, His Highness Sheikh Isa bin Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdul Latif bin Rajat Al Zayani, and the Minister of Finance and National Economy, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, also attended the meeting. His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa received a cable of thanks from the Minister of Health Faiq Al Saleh for His Royal Highness's continued support of the kingdom's healthcare sector, which has had a profound impact locally, regionally, and internationally. Al Saleh commended the kingdom's national COVID-19 efforts led by His Royal Highness. She noted that Team Bahrain's efforts have placed the kingdom as an international role model in safeguarding the health of citizens and residents. Al Saleh further extended her congratulations to His Royal Highness for the successful outcome of the Director General of the World Health Organization, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus' visit to Bahrain, which marked the opening of an official WHO office in the kingdom. Al Saleh concluded by wishing His Royal Highness the Crown Prince continued good health and for Bahrain further progress and prosperity under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rajid Al Zayani, the Sudanese Foreign Affairs Minister, Dr. Maryam Al Sadiq Al Mahdi, opened the new Sudanese embassy to Bahrain in the presence of the Sudanese ambassador. The Sudan Sudanese Foreign Affairs Minister and ambassador raised the Sudanese flag at the embassy building, and the Bahraini and Sudanese national anthems were played. The two ministers unveiled the commemorative plaque and toured the new embassy, visiting the Sudanese fine art exhibition that was held for the occasion. The Sudanese minister delivered a speech in which she expressed appreciation to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa for their interest in bolstering Bahraini-Sudanese relations, expressing gratitude to her 
Bahraini counterpart for her invitation and generous hospitality. Zayani also delivered a speech in which he welcomed Dr. Maryam, expressing pleasure in her acceptance of the invitation to visit Bahrain to open the new embassy and the opportunity it provided to exchange talks on bilateral relations and the means to bolster them in various fields. He expressed aspiration to strengthen fraternal ties in light of the directors of His Majesty the King and the Chairman of the Sovereignty Council of Sudan, General Abdel Fattah al-Burhan. Zayani added that Bahrain holds considerable appreciation for the fraternal relations with Sudan and takes pride in the wide-ranging cooperation, expressing pride in opening the new embassy. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Zayani, held talks with the Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sudan, Dr. Maryam Sadiq Al Mahdi, during her official visit to Bahrain. The minister stressed the deep rooted existing brotherly relations between the brotherly countries. He also affirmed the kingdom's keenness to develop and enhance relations at all levels. He praised the relentless efforts of the Sudanese community in Bahrain and its contributions to the development process in the kingdom. Dr. Al Mahdi expressed pleasure to visit the kingdom and conveyed Sudan's pride in the brotherly relations with Bahrain, which are constantly developing at all levels. She further expressed the Sudanese government's thanks for the position of Bahrain in support of Sudan and Egypt regarding the Ethiopian Renaissance Dam crisis, which supports the position of the two countries and preserving their water rights in the Nile River. She wished Bahrain continued progress and prosperity. During the meeting, they discussed ways to enhance joint cooperation between Bahrain and Sudan at all levels, stressing the need to continue developing joint cooperation between the two countries in various fields. The two sides also reviewed issues and challenges in the Arab world and a number of issues of common interest. The Minister of Foreign Affairs of Sudan, Dr. Maryam Sadiq Al Mahdi, visited the Mohammed bin Mubarak Al Khalifa Academy for diplomatic studies as part of her official visit to the kingdom. Upon her arrival to the academy, she was received by the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Dr. Abdel Latif bin Rashid Al Zayani, and the Executive Director of the Academy. Ambassador Dr. Sheikha Mnira bint Khalifa Al Khalifa. The Sudanese minister toured the academy and was briefed by the executive director of the academy about MBMA's goals in setting its training and development plans and strategies in order to advance the diplomatic and administrative work of the Foreign Affairs Ministry. She also shed light on the most prominent programs and workshops organized by the academy to develop the skills of the ministry's employees, including diplomats and administrative staff, as well as the process of conducting training programs and its outcomes. Minister Al-Mahdi commended the advanced level of the Academy's work, objectives and programs and the efforts exerted by the Ministry of Foreign Affairs to constantly develop the capabilities and skills of its employees. She also noted her appreciation towards the relentless efforts made in preparing and organizing training programs, wishing the Academy and the Ministry of Foreign Affairs continued success and prosperity. The Sudanese minister was accompanied on the visit by the Ambassador of Sudan to Bahrain, Ibrahim Mohammed Al-Hassan, and her accompanied accompanying delegation. The Minister of Health, Faiq al-Saleh, affirmed that the Athletes' Heart Conference, which will be hosted in December under the patronage of the representative of His Majesty the King for Humanitarian Work and Youth Affairs, His Highness Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad al-Khalifa, is considered a major step forward in the field of sports medicine and that the Kingdom is hosting the event exclusively in the region. The event will be organized by the Ministry of Health and Mohammed bin Khalifa bin Salman al-Khalifa Specialist Cardiac Center in cooperation with the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports. The Director General of planning and resources at the SCYS, Marwan Kamal announced that a committee was formed to study the cases of death in gyms and sports halls. The chairman of the organizing committee and head of the cardiac electrophysiology department at Mohammed bin Khalifa Specialist Cardiac Center, Dr. Adel Khalifa, affirmed that the conference will aim to shed light on the importance of practicing sports properly in general, in addition to spreading basic medical and health awareness. Information Minister Ali Romehi praised the documentary series produced by Al Watan newspaper, shedding light on the establishment of Al Khalifa State in Al Zubara. He lauded the foundations on which that state was established, such as achieving security and stability, economic prosperity, the judicial system, and care for science, scholars, craftsmen, and professionals. He praised the producers of the documentary, stressing the importance of historical documentaries and studies, as well as accurate quotations from reputable references. 
sources based on well-documented historic facts. He stressed the importance of these documentaries, which highlighted the efforts made by the first founders of the Al Khalifa state and other leaders down various ages, which contributed to achieving security and stability, staving off various designs and attacks that aim to undermine the capabilities of the people of Bahrain and exploit the bounties of the land of Bahrain and its dependencies, and Zabara in particular. The minister stated that Zabara and its people will and villages will remain present in the conscience of the people of Bahrain for generations and feature in the national educational curricula, media, press and majlises. He reiterated thanks to Al-Watan, stressing the importance of continuing such documentaries and history publications. He stressed the ministry's unwavering support to national efforts serving the homeland. The National Medical Task Force for Combating the Coronavirus held a press conference to highlight measures to mitigate the spread of COVID-19. Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros Ghebreyesus, and WHO Representative and Head of Office in Bahrain, Dr. Tasneem Atatra, attended the press conference, which marked their visit to open an official WHO office in Bahrain. At the beginning of the conference, the Minister of Health, Faiq al-Saleh, commended His Majesty the King's directives and the Kingdom's national efforts to safeguard Bahrain citizens' and residents' health, which which has been led by His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister. Al-Saleh noted that the opening of the WHO office in Bahrain is an achievement that the Kingdom can be proud of, given the challenging circumstances caused by the pandemic. The Director General of the WHO, Dr. Tedros Adhanom Ghebreyesus, expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Crown Prince and Prime Minister and the people of Bahrain for their warm welcome and hospitality. He noted that the opening of the WHO's new country office in Bahrain, their 152nd office in the world, will deliver strategic, technical, policy and service delivery support to aid global public health and well-being. Following his visit to several treatment, vaccination and isolation centers, Dr. Gabrielis expressed admiration for Bahrain's comprehensive COVID-19 response. He added that the kingdom is leading in its integrated, innovative, patient-centered care. Dr. Gabrielis was especially impressed by the number of women in leadership roles at the test, trace and treat facilities. He was further pleased that COVID-19 cases and deaths are now near the lowest levels that the kingdom has seen since the pandemic began. Dr. Gabriel has concluded by reiterating the WHO's commitment to work with the Kingdom of Bahrain to end the COVID-19 pandemic. With regards to epidemiological statistics, the Undersecretary at the Ministry of Health, Dr. Walid Al-Mana, stated that Bahrain has completed the vaccination of 1 million people with various approved vaccinations, which equates to 70% of the total population and 89% of those eligible for vaccination. Dr. Almana noted that community awareness and vaccinations have also played a role in flattening the curve and f allowing for the green alert level to be adopted. For her part, the WHO representative and head of office in Bahrain, Dr. Tasneem Atatra, congratulated Bahrain on its COVID-19 mitigation achievements. She added that Bahrain was one of the first countries to support international efforts to address COVID-19 and that the effective strategy it adopted led to its success in addressing the pandemic. Dr. Atatra concluded by indicating that the WHO is proud to further strengthen its partnership with Bahrain by establishing its new office in the kingdom and that the office has been established in line with Bahrain's commitment to public health. Frontliners engaged in combating the coronavirus were granted two exceptional steps in their July 2021 salaries. Civil Service Bureau Chairman Ahmed bin Zayed Zayed announced the measures in line with the directives issued by His Royal Highness Crown Prince and Prime Minister Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa. He paid tribute to His Royal Highness, hailing his directives as a great catalyst to continue the dedicated efforts to serve the nation. He praised the government's support to the dedicated national cadres, which contribute to bolstering Bahrain's standing and achievements. The national vaccination campaign continues to witness a wide turnout of citizens and residents. The Ministry of Health announced that 1,103,611 had taken the first dose of the vaccine, while 1,145,871 had taken the second and 129,452 had taken the booster dose. The ministry renewed its call for the community to commit to all precautionary measures and take the initiative to register for the coronavirus vaccination. 
The Ministry of Health said today that the number of active coronavirus cases reached 826, with 96 recoveries and 85 registered new cases. 34 of their registered cases are expatriates, 36 are contacts of active cases, and 15 are travel-related. The Ministry urges everyone to comply with the guidelines issued by the National Task Force for combating the coronavirus.